it's an honor. It really is to be in such a, a long-running, well-known show that people know and love and have connected to and to be able to wear that sweater and that scarf every night and just to to tell that story with that specific message is just like such a a gift that I was given at such a, I feel like a young age and opportunity after graduation. Because rent is rent and it has such a history with it, I view it as a really neat challenge to kind of take what everyone loves from the original and what they know and what they expect while also bringing my own twist because I am my own person and I'm one of the many Marks who have played the the role in the show so it's it's a neat challenge but there definitely is some pressure and um, audience members don't let you forget it. Being in this career you, you know what touring is you know that it's being on a bus or a plane and you go to different cities and different theaters and you do the show and then you pack up and you keep going but really getting to meet people from different cities and explore those cities and the culture especially if it's an international tour too is just really amazing and an opportunity that not a lot of people Get. It's been actually very fascinating. We've in rehearsals we would watch documentaries about the AIDS epidemic and working with so many of the original team members has been so fascinating, not only with the show but just as a, an actor and knowing that it was their like child and this thing that they made. I have all these books that just give the history of the show and Jonathan Larson and Michael Greif and and I've I've gone to the locations, even though it's very different in twenty eighteen. Right. But it's been really neat. That's, I think that's one of the coolest parts is that as actors we get to play pretend, but a lot of times it's based off of something real. So then getting to figure out how it's real and how you have to portray that has been really fascinating. We didn't get to see any of it, which I'm kind of glad for because I saw the closing Broadway cast and I did see the movie, but there are, I mean, people, Different actors work differently. Like some people love seeing the shows to get the inspiration and get in the headspace, but there are other actors, and I kind of think I'm 50-50, who don't like seeing anything. I enjoyed not knowing much about it. I guess the one reason I wish I had known more was because it's so iconic. But I like to think I did my homework, and from audience reactions, I think I do the job very well. So it was, it was fun to not know a lot about the show because then I just head over heels fell in love with it through the process. One of the professors who influenced me the most when I went to school at Western Carolina University was my voice teacher, Kristen Hedberg. And she is half voice teacher and half life coach. And there were times where you would go into your lesson and she could just tell you were having an off day and she'd say, we're just not even gonna sing. And we would just talk and chat. And it's just nice to have someone on your side and someone who roots for you and someone who realizes you're more than just a student and a musical theater major but a person with real issues. Something I that stuck with me is just to really take every opportunity as an educational experience. Even if it's a show and you didn't get the part you want or you're not working with the greatest director or choreographer or castmates, there's something to learn from everything. Even if it is like, oh, that's not how I want to be when I ever direct a show, or this isn't how I want to stage something. You can learn from everything. So I think that's something I learned going to a BFA program and being so involved, luckily, is that there's just always something to pull from it. Well, I applied to 11 of my 13 colleges for business because I was not going to go for theater. I didn't really, I grew up as a gymnast and a soccer player, and then I broke my shoulder in a soccer game, and I couldn't do either anymore, and then my school was having play auditions. So I auditioned for Me in St. Louis, or Louis, however you want to pronounce it, and I got in, and it was a lot of fun. And then my junior year of high school, I started doing, I did West Side Story, and then senior year was Legally Blonde, and I realized how much I loved it. By the time I decided to go for theater, a lot of programs already had their auditions, but I was already going like this entire East Coast tour of all the schools I had applied to and been accepted to, and Western Carolina University was one that still had one final program audition. So I went and I sang and I danced and I did my monologues and then I was accepted and I viewed it as my sign that I should go for theater and just see what happens. The first Broadway show I ever saw was none other than Wicked. It's one of my dream shows, so I can't complain. I have many dream roles, I hope a lot of people do. Um, but one is Bach in Wicked, one day. <laughs> um, and then I really want to be the MC in Cabaret, which is very different from Bach and Mark, but it's just a really unique character, I think. And then it's a little cliche, but I would kill for basically any role in Dear Evan Hansen someday. What I'm looking forward to most going to China and Japan is 
really the whole experience. I love traveling. I've been very fortunate that I've traveled across the world already. I love the different cultures and the different people and everything, the food, the music, the smells. Again, it sounds so broad and cliche, but it really is such a neat opportunity. I'm very excited to not have very good cell service because I don't like technology very well. I'm very bad at it, so I'm excited to really have to push it away to just kind of take in where I'm at. And just to really see new cities and new places that I will, would never really go to otherwise or never have the opportunity to go to. I think the unique thing about the 20th anniversary tour is that it it really connects to a broader range of people because when the show first came out, those people fell in love with it. And now 20 or 23 technically years later, those people are still here and they're still in love with Rent. And we get them at the stage door, the ones who say, oh, we saw the show off Broadway or we saw it right when it transferred. But then we also have the people my age and even younger who are now just learning about it and just getting into it. And the fact that they get to see it staged and not only on stage, but staged the same way that it was 20 years ago with all the same ideas and everything set in place and the same costumes and the choreography and everything, I think is really a unique opportunity because there's now so many more, more like truly generations of people who get to experience it and see the beauty and the magic of the show for what it is, who will hopefully pass it on. And then in the 50th anniversary tour, it'll be even more people. Some actors I looked up to and still look up to are I guess would be a lot of the people I would see on Broadway. I remember seeing Aaron Tveit in Catch Me If You Can and Chad Kimball in Memphis and, and seeing him and hearing him. I remember specifically being at the, the Schubert stage door waiting for him and everyone had left and I was still there just waiting for him. And then there are still people like Ben Platt and how beautiful and genuine he is as a person. Um, but also crazy talented. And I'm a huge Cynthia Erivo fan too. I think she's so incredible. <laughs> but I, I look up to everyone who's really not only on Broadway, but touring and doing regional productions and community theater and everything because it's a hard business. It's a really hard industry. And those people who are just going for it and putting themselves out there and struggling to just get by, I think is something that we all as performers have to look up to. There have been a lot of fun stage tour moments, even just a few weeks we've been out, but I remember there was this, this little girl once, her name was Morgan, and she said, can I have your autograph? And I said, yeah, absolutely. And she said, do you want mine? And I said, yes, absolutely. But then I realized I didn't have anything to write it on. And I said, I don't have anywhere to put it. I don't have anything to write it on. And she said, yes, you do. And I was like, okay. Um, so then I just stuck my hand out and she wrote her name on my hand in pen and I told her I would um, copy it over. Everyone's really fun, everyone has a different story and I think the best part is learning their stories and people either saying that they're part of the LGBTQ community or they have AIDS or HIV or they're struggling artists who in certain ways know what it's like to live the lives of our characters. It's just really, it's all a really cool experience. It's one of like my favorite parts of the show is meeting people afterwards. If Mark were to throw a Rachel five current pop songs he would add to the list on his playlist would be The Middle by Zed, I think, because Logan loves that song, so Mark's gonna love it. Greedy by Ariana Grande because it's just a jam. It's got a great downbeat. Little Mix. This is a shout out to my ex. I love, AKA So Mark Loves. <laughs> um, good downbeats and good like hip hop music. So um, anything, Lady Gaga, Bruno Mars, all those fun people. If there were one message that I would want people to take away from Rent, it would be, it is about how you measure your life and hopefully that's in love or in your joyous moments or your beautiful experiences and travels because it's so easy especially i'm realizing as a college graduate now where everything's just go 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 and pay your bills and just to get by to the next day it's so easy to truly let time fly by and i've even realized that being on tour so far so to really step back and the show has drastically made me do it in the most amazing way to step back and and appreciate every single day and every single moment and figure out, am I measuring this in, in my paycheck to get by week to week or am I measuring this in the memories I'm making and the love that I'm spreading and sharing and receiving and to just, to just know 
how special everything is and to take it for what it is. So it would be that I hope people realize that they should measure their lives in things that are truly important to them. I love ask, when people ask how I take care of myself because I am an old man deep, deep down. I, I really am at heart. So I, I go to bed usually right after the shows because Mark doesn't really leave the stage very much, so I'm, I'm, I'm always on. And so at the end of the show, it's very, I'm very tired usually, especially if it's a two-show day. So I always go to bed because I'm an old man and I need a minimum of eight hours of sleep. I drink a lot of water. My voice teacher actually gave me a tip to put like Ricolas in my water bottle. So while you're hydrating, you're also like kind of coating your throat. Always water, always rest, vocal rest in general, so not talking a lot, especially if I go out afterwards. And just being good to yourself, making sure you get enough sleep, not screaming, eating healthy foods, working out. I try to work out five to six times a week, um, especially before shows. And it's a lot of cliche things, but it really does all add up and it all kind of helps you have a better show and a better performance. What is it like wearing such a magical scarf? It is hot, it is very hot, and it is tricky because it likes to move, but it really is magical because it is the iconic Mark scarf that has been in the production from the beginning. I think it's great, I think it's so cool, and it all kind of creates the thing that, the, what makes Mark Mark. And to see people in the audience have that scarf, that's like the one thing that you really see people who love Mark will have or wear. Um, so it's neat because it's like the, it connects all the dots and it brings like everyone together in their own Mark rent fantasy kind of way. The biggest thing I relate to in Mark's character and story is how observant he is. I'm a very, very, very observant person and people tell me all the time, if I, I haven't been to your house in five years, I'll come back and notice that you painted that one wall or that that little picture in your bedroom is brand new. And Mark, that is who Mark is. He observes everyone and that's, He's the narrator and he's the cameraman and he observes all his friends living their lives and going through other moments. So while I don't have a camera with me every single day as Logan in 2018, I still notice the same things I believe Mark would and take note of them and record them even if it's just mentally. I think Mark would be friends with a lot of the, the underdogs of Broadway, so, or of the Broadway hero. So I think he would be friends with Elphaba and I think he would be friends with maybe Charlie Price from Kinky Boots and Evan Hansen, the people who aren't the most popular and the people who kind of have to fight to, to show that they're amazing and unique and special and maybe not the most stylish and maybe a little nerdy, but um, really just Ogie in Waitress, I love him. Um, so just those people who kind of have to fight a little harder to show that they deserve to be where they are.